this is Algebra 2, Lesson 6. We're going to talk about equations with decimal numbers and consecutive integer word problems. We're starting on page 42. When, it can, when an equation contains decimals, it's sometimes helpful to multiply every term in the equation by a power of 10 that will turn all of the decimals into integers. So if we have solve, this is 10 hundred thousandths, 3 thousandths x plus 4 tenths equals 2 and 5 hundredths. Okay, we can do this, um, but it's kind of messy. So it will be easier if we multiply all the terms by the smallest power of 10 that will leave no decimals behind. So in this case, let's see, we've got ten hundredths, this is thousandths, this is tenths, this is hundredths. So if we multiply all of these terms by one thousand, then it will turn all of these numbers into integers and we won't have to worry about playing with decimals. Okay, let's try it. So we're going to multiply this term times 1,000. We're going to multiply this term times 1,000. And we're going to multiply this term by 1,000. Remember, when we multiply times 1,000, we're moving the decimal three places for the tens, the hundreds, and thousands. Okay? So this term times 1,000 is just going to be 3x plus... 1, 2, 3, 400 equals 1, 2, 3, 2,050. Okay, this is now a much prettier problem. So we subtract 400 from both sides. We have 3x equals 1650 divided by 3 and x equals 550 x would have equaled 550 even if we had left it in decimals. It's just easier to do these problems without having to worry about where the decimal adds up. Okay? Let's try another one. The students found that .015 of the teachers were either brave or completely fearless. If 300 teachers fell into one of these categories, how many teachers were there in all? Okay, so we have 0.015t, so point zero, this is 15 thousandths of the teachers were either brave or completely fearless or completely in denial, and this equals 300 teachers. So that is our setup. We can do this a couple of different ways. Um, probably with this kind of problem you're going to be using a calculator and because we've only got one set of decimals you could just divide this by 0 .015, 0 0.015 plug it into your calculator and get the answer or if it's easier for you to think without the decimals we can move the decimals we're just going to multiply both sides times a thousand and that will be 15 teachers equals 300,000 moving the decimal three places. Okay? Divide by 15. You're going to get the same answer either way. So do e whichever one of these is easier. If you do this one, be careful about that decimal. Okay? So the teacher is going to equal 20,000 teachers. Okay. Let's try another one. An analysis of the old woman's utterances showed that 932 thousandths of them were vaticinal. I have no idea what vaticinal meant. I meant to look it up, but I forgot. So, well, if she spoke 2,000 times during the period in question, how many utterances were not vaticinal? Okay, so point 
932 of her utterances, and she had 2,000 utterances, were baptismal. Okay? Once again, we can pull this, this decimal out by multiplying all of the terms by 1,000. Or you can just use your calculator. It doesn't matter to me. You do what's easier for you. Okay? If you use a calculator, don't lose... Don't. Well, you're going to use your calculator anyway. If you leave it like this, don't lose the decimal. If you pull it out and turn it into 932 times... This times 1,000 is going to be 2 million. Don't forget to multiply this side by 1,000 also. If you do this... Don't lose the zeros, okay? Either way has pitfalls, so just be careful how you do it. The answer, either way you do it, is going to come out with 1,864 vaticinal utterances. Okay? The actual question is how many utterances were not vaticinal, so we're going to do 2,000 minus 1864 and the answer is going to be 136 were not vaticinal. Alright, extra credit. Look up vaticinal and tell me what it means. Okay? Okay, of all of our word problems, of course these are our favorite, possibly followed by the Rate times time equals distance once, right? Okay, maybe not. Okay, consecutive integer word problems. They are excellent practice in setting up complicated formulas. And you're going to find this practice very useful when you get to physics and chemistry and higher math problems, higher math classes. So even if you never have to find consecutive numbers in real life, the practice in setting up the problems is going to be very useful. Alright, to review. We're going to use n to mean some unspecified integer. If we're finding a greater consecutive integer, that means the next number that's larger. So if we start with n, the next number that's larger is n plus 1. The next number that's larger is n plus 2. The next one is n plus 3, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Odd integers are two units apart, right? If we do odd numbers, we're going to count 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. They're all two numbers apart. 1 plus 2 is 3, 3 plus 2 is 5, 5 plus 2 is 7. Consecutive even integers are also two units apart. 2 plus 2 is 4, 2 plus 4 is 6. 6 plus 2 is 8. So if we're finding consecutive even integers, we set up the problem as n, and n plus 2, and n plus 4. If we are finding consecutive odd integers, we set it up the exact same way. n, and n plus 2, and n plus 4. The numbers that the book gives you is going to determine whether the problems are odd and even. You just set it up correctly and let the book worry about whether the problem is going to come out correctly. Okay? So far they haven't made any mistakes in these. So, if the book says it's going to be consecutive even integers, then when you set up the n and n plus 2 and n plus 4 and use the rest of the numbers, they're going to work it out so they're going to final answer, the final correct answer are going to be even. You don't have to worry about you setting it up that way. If the book gives you a problem that says consecutive odd integers, then the numbers they give you are going to determine that the numbers are going to turn out odd. But the setup is exactly the same. Okay? Alright, so let's try a few. Find three consecutive even integers such that five times the sum of the first and the third is 16 greater than nine times the second. So we have three consecutive even integers. We're going to have n, 
and n plus 2, and n plus 4. 5 times the sum, 5 times the sum of the first, that's n, plus the third, that's n plus 4, is 16 greater, so we can subtract 16, so it'll equal 9 times the second. Okay? Alright, now we're going to simplify the parentheses and then use the distributive property. So we have 5 times n plus n is 2n plus 4 minus 16 equals 9 times n plus 2. Use the distributive property on both sides. So 5 times 2 is 10n plus 5 times 4 is 20 minus 16 equals 9 times n is 9n plus 9 times 2 is 18. So we have 10n, uh, 20 minus 16 is 4, equals 9n plus 18. Subtract 4 and subtract 9n. We're going to get all of the um, constants on one side and all of the n's on the other side. So this is going to cancel, this is going to cancel, and we're going to have n equals 14. Okay, this is not your final answer. We need to find all three consecutive even integers. So this is your first answer, but then we need to know that n plus 2 equals 16 and n plus 4 equals 18. The question is find three consecutive even integers. I need three answers. Okay? Alright, let's try the next one. Find four consecutive integers. It doesn't say even or odd, so we're just going to do n and n plus 1, n plus 2, and n plus 3. We have four consecutive integers such that 5 times the sum, 5 times the sum of the first and the fourth is 1 greater than, so we're going to subtract 1 so it's equal, 8 times the third. Okay, ready? We have 5 times, this is 2n plus 3 minus 1 equals 8 times n plus 2. Right? We're going to use the distributive property. We have 10n plus 15 minus 1 equals 8n plus 16. We have 10n plus 14 equals 8n plus 16. Alright, let's get all of the n's on one side and all of the constants on the other side. So negative 14, negative 14, minus 8n, minus 8n. This cancels and this cancels. We have 2n equals 2, so n equals 1. If n equals 1, then n plus 1 equals 2, n plus 2 equals 3, and n plus 3 equals 4. And those are your answers. And that is it for this lesson. Take your time and set up the problem correctly. That's the trick to these. Okay? Thank you very much.